It's been two years since I last read Remembrance of Earth's Past, a fantastic hard science fiction trilogy written by Chinese science fiction author Liu Cixin. When I read this series, my enjoyment of the novel was at an all-time high. It opened up new worlds for me, new ideas, and showed me the power of science fiction. I thoroughly enjoyed it. However, upon reflection, soon after reading the three novels, The Three-Body Problem, The Dark Forest, and Death's End, I realized that there are many problematic aspects to the story, particularly in the way women are represented, among other things. Some problems are more glaring than others. However, the ideas at play with Liu Cixin's mind and creativity still manage to overcome those issues and serve as a really wonderful series that I recommend you get into if you haven't read it already. Now, perhaps it's not your thing. There are a lot of technical details to the science fiction that he writes, and that can be problematic. But for my tastes, it was really fun and exciting and a little bit refreshing. So, of course, wanting more of Liu Cixin, I bought some of his other works and have enjoyed them, such as one of his earlier novels, Ball Lightning, which is again full of really cool ideas, technologically speaking, and is great fun. But it doesn't quite scratch that itch. Now, of course, my preferred method of reading Liu Cixin, or as it says, Cixin Liu, but this is his family name and in Chinese that comes first. Bless you. <laughs> the Wandering Earth, which is a great science fiction collection of short stories. And also, The Wandering Earth is a fantastic science fiction movie. I highly recommend it. But again, even though I prefer his short stories, they don't quite scratch that itch. Of course, we can always move on, go to some other short stories with Hold Up the Sky, a newer collection of his stories. But as great as the stories are in here, as creative and imaginative as his stories are, it still doesn't scratch that itch for the remembrance of Earth's past. And of course they wouldn't, because they are not stories set in that world, in that universe. They're different worlds, different ideas, different thought experiments. However, that's okay. Maybe, just maybe, I can try to explore other science fiction authors that are Chinese. For example, in Ken Liu's Broken Stars, edited and translated by Ken Liu, with 16 different stories by 16 different Chinese science fiction authors, this is a really fantastic collection. One of the stories is by Liu Cixin, and I highly recommend that story. In my opinion, some of his best character work, which is greatly lacking in pretty much all of his writing. However, his story in here still doesn't quite scratch that itch, but there is one author, one author in here by the name of Bao Shu, who does a fantastic job with a story about a man who ages. And as he ages, the culture of his country, China, goes in reverse, all the way back from the modern day, which is set in about the late knots, late 2000s, and around the time of the 2008 Summer Beijing Olympics, going all the way back to the Second Sino-Japanese War, culturally speaking, even though he's living time forward. Bao Shu stunned me, wowed me, amazed me. It hit the kind of ideas that I want to read in science fiction. And when I found out that he wrote a novel for fan fiction that has been published as a three-body problem novel called The Redemption of Time, well, you know, I just had to get it. Now, the question is, is this story 
absolutely epic fan fiction worthy of the title of a novel that is in addition to the Three Body Problem series, Remembrance of Earth's Past, or is it epic trash? Well, it's okay. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. As fan fiction, it is really cool. It is great about exploring ideas that are in Sichin Liu's works and answering questions that you may have had. It is a perfect example of what fan fiction can be and perhaps should be. It uses certain characters, again, that we maybe wanted to know more about. For example, Yin Tianming, who is our main character here. He falls in love with a woman, A.A., his wife, for 40 years before she dies. During this time in the early part of this novel, he explains all the cultural aspects of the Trisolarans, who you will know if you have read the series. If you haven't read the series, I don't think this book will work well for you. It is, in some ways, standalone. It could work, but there is a lot of richness and rewards that come from already understanding and knowing the story that the original author wrote. So I wouldn't recommend this on its own at all in any way. You won't have the same enjoyment as you might if you've read the series, because this series is fantastic but leaves a lot of questions. It's very complex work. Bao Shu goes in and explains some of the missing pieces that maybe were not explained very clearly or at all with Yun Tianming telling his wife all the things that he influenced in the Trisolaran culture. And then, of course, in the middle part, he's given a task, a mission, as a new seeker to find the lurker, who is basically the child of the master, the creator of the Tenth Dimension, which is the original universe. And it gets a little confusing once we get to this part, but it's his mission to find the Seeker. Because in this part, we find out that the Dark Forest theory doesn't quite match up with our expectations based on what we learned from the original novel. In fact, it only refers to two particular beings, the Master and the Lurker. The Master wants to return to the Tenth Dimension universe and that is a place where time is infinite and always and all these kind of things. But the lurker wants to use dimension strikes to seek out time. It craves time. Dimension strikes, of course, going from 10th dimension, 9th dimension, on and on, 4th dimension, 3rd dimension, 2nd dimension first, all the way down to zero in search for Dare I say lost time? <laughs> oh, Marcel Proust. Anyway, um, it's his mission and goal to seek that out. And of course, if the master is successful, then everything will recycle and we will see the cycle again of humanity and life and everything that happens in the series that we all know and love. However, even though the master is successful, we do have some problems. Five kilograms of matter do not make it back into the formula, so to speak, uh, to recycle the earth and <laughs> the universe and everything. So we have a bit of a butterfly effect. And with that butterfly effect, we are introduced to an alternate timeline of all the events that we learned about with the Three Body Problem series. And we get an idea of where the title of the overall series, Remembrance of Earth's Past, comes from, with a nod and a wink to the original author. And in that sense, I think this is a perfect example of what fanfiction can be and a dream come true to write something 
that even the author loves uh, and recognizes as a great piece of work. Is it a great piece of work even knowing the entire series? Mm, I think it's okay. It's really cool to explore a lot of ideas and explain certain things that happen throughout the series. It's a great refresher in that sense and adds a lot of great new information for fans to enjoy. Once we get to the mission that Yun Tianming has, the payoff for it is not as great, in my opinion, as the adventure of it sounds. Much of this novel is very passive in a sense. It's a lot of telling about what happened and about what has been, rather than active excitement, which we do see a lot of in Liu Cixin's original series. So in that sense, I don't think it's that great, but it is quite a fun read. Um, even though the payoff isn't that great, once we get to the alternate history, that is really fun. And the nod and the wink at the end is also well done. And I think works really well for fan fiction. If it was not fan fiction, I would not like it at all. If it was <laughs> its own thing, that would annoy me. But um, if you are a fan of Remembrance of Earth's Past series, I would tentatively recommend it to you. Thank you.